Now, I want to welcome everybody back to the Nuck If You Buckingham Palace. Uh, if y'all tuned in, if y'all familiar with the show, y'all know who he is, man. He's a NBA G League champion. He's an NBA champion. And uh, now he's a two-time WNBA champion. I got to tell y'all, man, this, this, nobody's ever said this about a, a WNBA team in about 20 years, but a repeat champion from the two-time WNBA champion, Coach Tyler Marsh from the Las Vegas Aces. <laughs> What's going on? I appreciate you. Uh, appreciate you having me again. Um, been going. looking forward to it ever since the last time I was on. So, uh, yeah, let's get to it. Let's go, man. First, I want to congratulate you on the championship, uh, number two, two times in a row. Appreciate so that. you you've been with the late uh, excuse me, the, the the Las Vegas Aces for two mm -hmm. years now, two championships. You don't know what it's like to lose in the city <laughs> of Las Vegas. Uh, so what I want to do here, man, this is a wrestling podcast. We wrestling fans. Yep. First time in 20 years, 21 mm -hmm. years to be exact, since uh, Lisa Leslie and the Sparks did it. Give us a celebration promo like you just came out of WrestleMania and just won the championship. Talk your talk for a brief second. I I'm putting oh, you man. on blast. But <laughs> let's let's get it. Let's do your best. Man, I think what I can say is just that, you know, we, uh, we kind of let the outside world do all the talking for us and we kind of uh, backed it up with our actions. We, we let our actions speak uh, on the court and uh, you know, our character for who we were off the court translated to who we were on the court as mm -hmm. well. So uh, we're just consistent, man. We got dogs on this team. Um, we came out prepared. We came out ready. Uh, we were under man going into the finals and coming out the finals. We were under man, but we got it. We mm -hmm. found a way to get it done. So we got leadership all across the board from our uh, within our organization on down to our coaching staff and then on to our players for sure. So, uh, yeah, two times we trying to make it three. For sure, man. I love it. Let's uh, let's talk about the championship some more, man. We had 34 wins. Uh, that's the WNBA record. You guys are the top five in like practically every single statistical uh, category. You know what I'm saying? Like points, points uh, allowed, everything, rebounds, assists, field goal percentage. Like you guys are going crazy. Uh, of course, uh, Coach Hammond was suspended the first couple games of the season. You actually took over as a head coach for the first game versus Seattle. Uh, how important was it to set the tone early in that first game, just going into everything? Uh, you guys looking for a repeat championship, first to do it in 21 years. Like, how did that set the tone? Uh, you guys won, I think, like 40-something? Yeah, I think uh, more so than anything, it was just a testament to uh, the attention to detail that our players put forth and kind of being consistent in terms of uh, all of us being on the same page with what we wanted to do and accomplish going into that game, whether – uh, whether coach was there or not. And so um, I think that there's so many different parts to it. There's the trust aspect the coach had within the rest, within myself and the rest of the staff uh, to be able to get it done. Our uh, other assistant, Natalie Nakase, she, mm -hmm. um, she coached that following game in LA and uh, we got the win there as well. And then, and then trust from, from our players and trusting that, um, you know, that Natalie and myself are going to put forth our best effort and uh, the messaging is all consistent um, passed down from, from coach Hammond. And so uh, that's kind of what we're about. We're just, we're, we're all on one accord. We're not going to agree all the time, but once we step on the floor, we all have the same mindset. We all have the same goal uh, and we're all on the same page. And so uh, I think that's what makes us, uh, what makes our bond so strong uh, within the staff and within the players. Uh, and that's kind of what pushed us forward um, throughout the year. And so I think it was a, it was a, it was a great moment, obviously for myself um, to be able to do that, but also uh, it was a great moment for this team to see that everything that we put together in training camp um, and everything that we built upon from last year uh, was still in place moving forward. So uh, from a setting the tone standpoint, that's kind of where, where it was at. And, and maintaining focus for five months out the season, like for us, the fans, and just for anybody watching hoops, it looked kind of easy. Like you guys is blowing teams out almost every single night, but we, we know that it's not that easy. Right. Just like, like we said, 20 years, like it couldn't have been as easy as it looks. Let's, let's talk a little bit more about that. Like maintaining focus, you know, you, you talked about building on last year, mm -hmm. but like you, you had, you had some adversity that, you know, adversity, everybody's aware of some things that you might not have been aware of, like mm -hmm. maintaining focus. Let's talk about that. Cause it, it might, you might, you might see some gems that I might need. Cause I, I have a little difficulty maintaining focus myself. So like what kind of went into that outside of uh, everything else? 
Yeah, one two things that we always preached was one sticking together through ups and downs, through thick and thin, mm-hmm. is is um you know kind of sticking together through. Is we kind of approached it with aces versus everybody type of mindset and type of approach. Uh, and then the other thing was keeping the main thing the main thing. And so, uh, you know, I think I spoke about this last time I was on is like uh, post championship last year, like the the messaging was never about like we knew that championship was the goal. We knew we had a team that could compete for it um, and we knew we had the pieces in, in place. But uh, it was more so about establishing a mindset establishing an environment establishing a standard uh that we can live by and then you can live with the results whether you win or whether you lose and so because you never you honestly never know what the season is going to bring um teams there's 11 other teams that are just as capable of uh coming out on top and, and presenting challenges throughout the season as well um it's a tough league to win in and so for us mm-hmm. it was uh you know we we kind of we saw beyond just what the End of, end of the season goal would be and so uh you know for us that was just a matter of uh respecting ourselves uh, as as individuals as teammates respecting the opponents and respecting the game and so uh you know when you when you set when you have those standards in place then it kind of gives you a guideline day by day to go by and so now you know you're not you're not you're never looking forward or looking ahead past an opponent you don't you want to take um you want to give every opponent you know its proper uh, perspective and its proper energy and attention uh, we just take it game by game by game. Mm-hmm. Uh, we could have never expected going into that game four in the finals without our starting point guard, without our starting center. Uh, and to be able to, you know, stick together through that, to have a next man up type mentality as well, next woman up mentality, um, and still come away with that victory. Just again, it's a, it's a, it's a testament to just how close knit our culture is here. Uh, and then the professionalism of our players as well to continue to put forth that work and continue to uh, establish that chemistry both on and off the court. For sure. The, the chemistry is unmatched. Uh, some of the best chemistry I've seen in like any team. I've been following this team yeah. since they moved out here to Vegas. And the last two years is unmatched. A lot of that is a factor from the chemistry uh, aspect. It's the factor of the personalities of everybody involved. Uh, we've yeah. got some unique, fun personalities like, if y'all follow the Aces on social media, if you don't, you're missing out. For uh, sure. <laughs> uh, but let's talk about that uh, as far as, like, related to wrestling. Mm-hmm. Who on this roster, not even just, like, the players, but even, like, some coaches that might come to mind, who will make, like, the best wrestling personality from their real-life personality? Like, who will probably translate the best? Man, I think there's any number of them. I think that you can make a case for uh for Asia Wilson for oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, That's my number one. Uh, I think you can make a case for Sydney Colson. Um, uh, I think you can make a case for Kelsey Plum. Yeah, uh, really, it's, <laughs> really, you can literally go one through eleven uh, and make a case for any of them because their personalities are that grand or that great. Um, they get along with with just about everybody, and so. Um, <clears throat> And I think, again, I think that kind of relates to uh, to who we are as an organization and who we are as a staff, like that that part of the game is encouraged. That part of being here and being a part of the Aces is encouraged to be yourself, to let those personalities come out and let those personalities shine. Uh, and I think that, you're, that you've seen, you know, since the championship, for especially, uh, it's what makes them stars. It's not just, you know, how great they are on the court, but they're great people with great personalities off the court as well. And so the more, and it's not just them, it's around the league as well. So I think the more that um, that those personalities are allowed to come out and, uh, and and to be shown to the world, I think is only going to grow uh, their stardom, but only going to grow the game as well. So uh, yeah, you can make a case for all of them for sure. Facts. We need a, we need Sid as like somebody manager at WrestleMania. Definitely. Right? <laughs> definitely. And, and don't let it fool you. Becky could be one too. She could be a manager herself. Oh, I, I heard her talking that talk at the parade. Yeah. I already know. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> I already know. Uh, I, I do want to talk about uh, a matchup I've seen because, like, people don't know. You you made your wrestling debut a few weeks ago on social media. Uh, the Bret Hart and Macho <laughs> Man costume, man. Let's talk about that because yeah. I'm going to just tell I, – I logged on to Instagram. First thing I saw, it popped me like crazy. I was like <laughs> – this this is this is dope. Like, how did that come together? Whose idea was it? Like, I seen like Eric, you, your wife, and your son were all involved in the costume. Like, who's yeah. who had the like grand idea? I'm pretty sure it was, it was you. 
It was 100% mine. My <laughs> wife is not a big wrestling fan. Uh, she just kind of rolled with it. She's not a huge Halloween person anyway. And so I was like, okay, this might, might be my time to shine. So right. <laughs> uh, it was kind of, it was my idea. Um, I was going back and forth because my son, he's like really into Sesame Street. He's only mm-hmm. 14 months. He's super into Sesame Street. And so I'm like, okay, do I want to do what I want to do for Halloween? Or do I want to do what he wants to do for Halloween? I'm like, he, he not going to know the difference. So until he does. <laughs> You might as well just roll with what I want to do. So uh, I found a, uh, actually found his uh, his uh, costume first and found a little uh, Tyler Ma- Macho Man, um, you know, ensemble for him. And then I found the Bret Hart one. Bret Hart is my favorite wrestler of all time. Right. So I uh, found that for myself. And then we just kind of went all out with it. And um, it was fun. It was fun for me anyway. So he might look back on it a couple of years later and, you know, wonder what the hell dad was doing, but it was fun while it lasted. All right, he got the dub over you too, though. So he did get the dub. That, that, that means a lot. Like, especially yeah, my wife was a referee. Like, my wife was right, right. My wife was a referee. She wasn't gonna let him lose. <laughs> also, it, it was a conspiracy against you, is what yeah, you said. Yeah, yeah. I understand. Uh, <laughs> that's how it go. So, uh, <laughs> should we expect any future matchups down the line? Like, you know, you said by the time he, you know, starts to understand it, he might want to do what he want to do. But until then, he got a couple more years. Like, Yeah, I hope so, man. I hope it's something that we can continue doing. I hope that, you know, as he gets older and uh, hopefully he can, you know, develop a passion for for wrestling like I do. But uh, if not, we'll figure something out. We'll find a new opponent somewhere. Guys, it got to be for one of those belts they sent y'all, too. No, nah, definitely. Definitely. We need a championship match next Halloween 2024. That's what we're calling for right now. I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to set that one up. You can announce it. Hey, let's get it. Young Kings Wrestling <laughs> announcing it. We can do that. That's for sure. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> for sure. Uh so like with the current TV though, you've been able to keep up with some things now since the season's over. You got a lot of free time. You can kind of sit back and chill a lot more. Are you mm-hmm. been keeping up with what's going on on TV? Yeah, during the season, it's mostly just pay-per-views that I actually watch, but I listen to a ton of wrestling podcasts so that I'm up to date with what's going on and uh, storylines and champ- champions and whatnot. And uh, I try to do so as much. I do so for uh, all across WWE, but uh, I try to stay up to up to speed with AEW too. Mm-hmm. Um, I went to a couple of, <clears throat> there's like an off day uh during the season. I'll, I'll go to, you know, something that's local. Uh, so I went to a couple of Impact um events that was here so uh yeah i try to i stay i stay pretty up to date pretty current for sure you gonna check out survivor series next week yeah i'm looking forward to it i'm a um you know survivor series has kind of has changed a little bit from from what i grew up knowing as survivor yeah, right. Series. um but it's still a cool event um you know i think that uh i'm actually most interested to see uh kind of how the whole um uh Rhea Ripley kind of thing uh, pans out. I'm a huge fan oh, of her. Yeah. Uh, it's the, um, I'm a big Cody Rhodes fan too, but I would like to see him more in singles contest than, you know, than, uh, than group inv- group settings and uh-huh. uh, tag settings. But um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. All right. We, we got to finish that Cody Rhodes story. And yeah. uh, WWE is coming to town next month too. You going to check that out? You know what? I'm I'm upset because I'm gonna be home. I'm gonna be back in Alabama for Christmas yeah, yeah. Uh, with the family, and it's gonna be here. I think it's on the 29th. Uh, yeah, the it's right in smack time. middle holiday season. Yeah, so. man. So I'm I'm gonna miss that here, but uh, I'm gonna definitely get to get to something next time it's out here for sure. For sure, we got a lot of stuff going on, and uh, it's it's been fun having you. I like you know talking to you, talk you know the aces, talk wrestling, mm-hmm. uh, but. That's all we got, though, man. So, it, it's like I told you, it's real brief, real short. But uh, anything else, like, as far as wrestling that you might want to talk about that, you know, that we haven't really covered or anything we might not know, uh, you know, in regards to wrestling about you that, you know, we know, like you mentioned last time you were on here, Bret Hart's your favorite wrestler yep. and a lot of other things. But, like, what's something that we might not know that you you never mentioned to us before? Um, I don't know. It's, it's... It's fine. I always say that, like in another in another lifetime, that's what I'm gonna be a I'm gonna be a WWE wrestler in another right. another life. And um, <laughs> I told my I told my wife the other day. I said um I said uh because my my birthday's coming up in December, and I was like I think next year, I think next year what I want to do is I'm gonna take a wrestling class. Like I'm gonna take a mm. like there's a couple here locally, and yeah. it's like, I feel like it's just something I gotta do, um before I'm too old to do it. Uh, so it's something that's kind of on the bucket list that I, that I want to do. Um, 
going to WrestleMania has been on the bucket list. I've done I've done that before. I want to go to a, never been to a Royal Rumble. Would love to go to that live. Um, but I think you know I think wrestling in general is uh, something that kind of it was super you know pretty much at its peak um, late nineties early two thousands and then kind of dipped off for a little bit. And then I think now though I think now it's from a popularity standpoint is coming back to where to where it was just it's so much wrestling uh to um you know to soak in um you can if you don't like wwe you got aew don't like aew you have impact you have new japan like there's so many different places to go to if uh, to fulfill your wrestling needs and i think from a talent perspective it's as great as the pool talent pool is as deep and as great as it's ever been um <clears throat> and i think the storylines are catching up to what the talent, uh, you know, has now. I think that's kind of been the lull in, in recent years is that you've had so much talent, but you didn't really know what to do with it from a storyline perspective. And so now with the, you know, stuff like the bloodline and stuff like Judgment Day, like, um, you know, those those are thriving and you're seeing just how, no matter how great they are in the ring, it's those, uh, those storytelling aspects of it that keeps uh, people wanting more and it keeps bringing an audience to it. And so uh, I'm excited to see, uh, I'm Excited to see where it's at, and excited to see where wrestling is continuing to go. Yeah, it's uh, it's been booming since the pandemic. You know, they they took some time off to just kind of get things together, get all the ducks in order, and now like especially WWE, they just off to the races. Like it's some of the best content in years. Mm -hmm. But one of my biggest issues with WWE, and maybe you can help me out with this, mm -hmm. how come we can't get a pay per view in Las Vegas, like? They announce all these shows everywhere else. Can we push for something? Can we can we get a, a little assist from from our two time defended champ to get a WrestleMania in Las Vegas? That would be amazing, man. I know, um, like I think it was either I think it was last year. Money in the Bank was here, or two years ago, maybe. Yeah, was, Money yeah, in the Bank 20, was here. But yeah, yeah, we last year. I mean, WrestleMania here would I think would be would be awesome. It would be amazing. Uh, Allegiance right here. Legion Stadium is right here to do it in. So I think, um, I think it's a it's a great city a great place uh it would be super fun and there's a lot of a lot of different elements that you can make them from a marketing perspective to really uh you know put it over the top here in vegas so um yeah we definitely should make a push for that let's get that i i know everybody y'all y'all like to take our storyline ideas and put them on tv so i know y'all hearing this let's get a wrestlemania in vegas we already got a champion over here that's gonna help us with that too so come on triple h <laughs> whoever else is whoever else is involved let's get it but yeah. uh i do want to thank you again coach for joining us uh second it. time around so we had to have you back on here uh plug your socials let them know where you can find you at and uh let's uh let's give another victory speech as well i appreciate it um yeah you can find me on twitter at hoop for thought h-o-o-p the number four t-h-o-u-g-h-t or you can find me on instagram at tr marsh 12 um yeah, I think that, you know, it's just from from the Aces perspective, we're um, looking forward to coming in and getting some downtime on this offseason, then ramping it back up, come start of the new year. And just uh, once free agency and, and and the draft comes and that kind of stuff. And once we have our roster back intact and um, and our core coming back here and we're looking forward to um, kind of starting from from ground zero again and building it back up um, still with, you know, under the foundation and the principles that we built over this last two years. Um, and we're trying to make a run for this. So hopefully we can three-peat it. So uh, it's a lot to look forward to. Um, Aces are are continuing to move the needle here in, in Vegas and in, in women's basketball and in the W. Uh, women's basketball is continuing to grow. So get out and support when you can. Uh, and then just Vegas as a, as a sports city is just continuing to thrive. F1 is here. Uh, this mm -hmm. weekend and then uh the golden knights are are, are back good you got the uh, the raiders who are uh back on the on the come up so it's uh uh you know it's a lot to look forward to here in vegas um from a sports perspective and so got a baseball team a couple days ago got a baseball team coming yep for sure so uh there's a lot to look forward to if you're if you're in vegas if you're uh if you live here and if you support the the teams that are here and so uh that's only going to continue to grow and it's great for the city for sure, man. Again, thank you, Coach. Uh, congratulations are in order again. Appreciate I'm gonna that. Keep, I'm going to keep nailing it because y'all got to understand how big this is. 21 years. Like, team, a, a team has now repeated in the yeah. WNBA for 21 years. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. And the last team that did it was the last team that did it. So. Right. 
right now. We're that's, blessed. That's we're blessed, man. We're blessed with the, uh, you know, it's a, it, it just shows what uh, an investment to to women's sports is and can be, um, and what the investment that uh, that Mark Davis has made into the organization and how that has kind of streamlined down uh, to the players that you see on the court. And so uh, we take care of our own, we take care of our players and, and our staff here. Um, and so we just, uh, this is, there's no greater place to be than in Las Vegas and, and for the Aces, uh, if you're in the W for sure. For sure, man. Again, thank you. Uh, y'all, y'all check out everything he got going on and let's get a WrestleMania in Vegas. Let's do that. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. I appreciate you. Appreciate you, coach. Thank All you. Right.